guys, okay, and this video, like a bird on we are a going tree. to be making this awesome hat. Now this one I made, oops, kind of long, so you can have it on, I'm going to do this bin as a floppy hat, if you should choose, or you can pull it down with the brim up or a normal hat. <laughs> now this pattern is made to go with the matching cow and take my glasses off for this. Okay, so this is the matching cow. It is made for people like me who get cold. You can use it I can put my glasses back on. It is super cold out here now. So, you can do it like this. Have everything covered up but your eyes. And go outside. <laughs> Alright, my chair is just taking me everywhere. Or, you can take and just fold it in half. Okay, so to make the hat, what we're using is our KB Double Knit Rotating Loom. Here's the box. Tools you'll need. Crochet hook to finish off this cast on edge and to weave in ends. Now, loom tools, you can use just your normal loom tool, whatever your tool may be. But for this loom, they do not come with the loom. You have to purchase them separately. They have these double pointed tipped hooks. And I show you how to use these hooks. Now, one thing you might notice with this pattern. Um, the cow and the hat are the exact same other than the length, which you can make the same if you want, and the cast off. So... The video is actually, the cast off section is different than the rest. So if you've already watched the cow video, in the video description below, there will be a direct link to just skip right to the cast off section. So I hope that helps. There's also the PDF in the video description below as well, which the PDF is for the cow and the hat. Alright guys, I hope you enjoy this video. Questions, comments? Shoot me an email, info in the video description again, or leave a comment in the comic section. Comic section. Yes, the comic section. The comment section. There we go. All right, guys. Hope you enjoy. To do our cast on, I'm actually going to do a figure eight cast on. So to do that, you create a slip knot. I put that little string down in the middle. and then tighten it up. Um, typically I do not hook my yarn like this but there this loom does not offer an anchor peg and if I was going to be doing this in the figure eight for the entire project I would be using a tensioner which is basically something that goes over the string so you can hold it and you can wrap really really fast. But for a cast on we are doing the stockinette figure eight stitch for the body, we are just going to be doing the stockinette. But if you like the way this looks, you can do this entire project with just the figure eight stitch. I just suggest use a straw or something as a uh, yarn guide. Do this all the way around back to your first peg right here. All right, so I've done all of these. You might need to hold this down. Go around the loom, push those down. There we go, see they're all pushed down. That's kind of staying where it needs to be. 
grab a yarn and a contrasting collar that you're not going to get mixed up with any of the other collars. Let me zoom out to show you this. Okay, so what I'm taking is this contrasting collared yarn. Oops. Putting it down in the track. All the way around. This is to separate this first row out so that when we go back at the end, we can crochet that cast on and it'll look really pretty and even. And you can either use your loom tool or a crochet hook. But where this, between the first stitch and your last stitch, I just pull both those strands down through. They are down here. Um, and just so I don't accidentally pull them out as I'm working, I do a little knot there. And I just, you can either do like a slip knot type knot or you can do a bow. I just knotted it so it'll be easy to remove. So there, we've got the first part of our cast on done. Now, you're following, pull that down, you're doing the exact same thing as your first row. You are figure eight wrapping another row. wrap all the way around and then I'll show you what to do next. Oops. Okay. Zoom back in so you can see every peg now has two loops on it and at this point you have the option you can use if you have these loom tools you can use them or you can use a regular loom tool. I'm actually going to use one a new loom tool. I got this one from Cindy Wood. It's their new ergonomic tool. I'm going to try it out a bit. Um, I will be using... So I take and take the bottom loop over the top first for the one that is connecting right here. That way this does not come undone. Now you can take and just start pretty much anywhere on the inside or the outside taking your loops up and over. I'll show you a couple on the outside here. You just take the bottom over the top, bottom over the top, and you do that all the way around. Now, the problem I found with doing that is it pulls the stitches on the inside up and then it's harder to grab those. So I prefer, let me re-angle my camera a bit, I prefer to go on the inside and take my stitches and then just rotate it. You can purchase these tools right here separate to use if you want. Now I will go ahead and show you how to use these as well. You would think smaller one for the inside, bigger one for the outside, but it's actually the opposite. The bigger one goes for the inside because you pick up alternating ones, which I will show you real quick. Hopefully my camera is zooming in on all this right. So what this does is less tension and you get it done a lot faster. I um, Using these tools saved me about 15 to 20 seconds per row. Now I haven't redone this after I've made, because I've made two sets. I've done three cows so far and I've done two hats. And then I did like a weird hood thing using these. So I haven't re-timed myself, but I do find that I save a lot of time using these. But when you first get them, you may notice that they may not fit in the tracks right, so you might have to kind of squeeze them together or pull them apart just a little bit to fit. And then it's a lot less work on your wrist because you're, well, you're literally doing half the work that you would normally be doing. And for me, with my carpal tunnel and everything, it just seems to work a lot better. But there is a bit of a learning curve with these, so if you get them, you do need to practice. You want to make sure your loops are going over. And 
and you do that all the way around on the inside then let me show you how you can use these on the outside again you may need to bend them a little bit one thing I've noticed with mine this one right here is just a tad bit longer than this one if you're right-handed that's probably a big plus but I am left-handed so I have to kind of tilt it just a bit and again I did have to bend these just a little bit just so they fit in the grooves easily Oops. so you will go around uh, sorry I'm sitting a lot farther away from the loom than I'm used to You go all the way around the outside and you do the same or there's no problem you can do your regular loom tool if you would like that is perfectly fine you don't have to have these tools right here they are just an option but you'll probably see me using them off and on throughout the video just know that everything I'm doing with them you can do with this so go ahead and take your bottom loops over your top loops on the inside and outside and I will show you how to get started for the body of the project cast on is complete I pushed the strings down to the bottom now this cast on edge don't even think about it until you're done with the project because um, that strings want to stay there and hold it the whole time now to make it easier to see how I'm wrapping this because I'm doing a stockinette stitch I'm going to do the black first again no anchor peg so I am doing a knot and I'm not a fan of doing knots in projects but I will show you okay this is coming the string is coming from this peg right here let me zoom this in a bit the working yarn is coming from this peg so I'm going to put my slip knot actually instead of a slip knot I'm just going to do a loop do my loop on this one and I'm going to hold both strands together so I don't have this long tail to weave in and as you can see I'm going over every other peg and I'm going to wrap at least three to kind of lock that string in then that string will kind of be buried in here and then I will go and show you I will do this slow so you can see I'm wrapping every oops, every other peg but I think and when I'm doing this I usually sorry I had to move the working yarn out of the way And see you can just keep this in one place and wrap all the way around and that is awesome now this one that we started with I'm rewrapping it then I'm going to take my loom tool and take that bottom loop over okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take just so I don't have to mess with it I'm going to take the black and actually just stick right there so I can go ahead and do my like rainbow variegated color and with it I'm just picking up the opposites it's coming from this peg so I'm just picking up what I haven't got yet The reason I chose to do a two collared project for my first project on this loom is because see how fast you can wrap this up I'm already done with the row um, you don't have to worry about again I am taking the loop off so these are locked in and actually usually what I do is while I'm working on them this which I love this fact that I can do this while I'm working the row I can shove both yarn 
inside the loom that way there's nothing in the way of me wrapping this or knitting off these pegs which is basically that means taking the bottom loops over the top loops pushing everything down and this will create the black will be kind of like these beige stripes and the rainbow color will be like the blue and the darker brown but they're going to pull different and pooling is just how your yarn shows so as you can see this was a slow variegated yarn so that meant that it striped it it was slow collars it was really thick and it striped real big chunks this one was a variegated yarn that just it just happened that it kind of pulled in like a swirl so we will see how this rainbow yarn works up kind of interested in seeing that so go ahead whether you're using these tools or this tool take and knit off one thing I do suggest is I do not always start at the same spot so I'm not starting right here where my my uh, stitches are already cast off just to hold those in place so it doesn't come undone maybe I'll start over here for the inside and knit off all the way around like I said I prefer to do the inside first it seems to be a lot easier that way um, you have more room on the outside of the loom to maneuver your hooks and everything. So it just, for me, it works better that way. You don't have to do it that way. That just seems to work better for me. So you'll knit off your entire inside. And then just pick a random spot on the outside. And then knit off the entire outside. Push all those down. And I'll show you your next row. Alright, that row is complete. Now, we can do our next row, which I'm just going to pull the black out and leave the rainbow yarn in. And you always start with the same collar. So every row, I start with black. I'll zoom in a bit. And now for this, this row right here, because the row you just cast off was the last of like your cast on row, so it was all the rainbow. So your next row will be rainbow and the black. There are some from your cast on that'll have more than one loop. You'll treat those like one loop. But okay, so my yarn is coming from this peg. So I will go up here. And you wrap just the same. All the way around. I'm just going to do this in real time so you can see how long once you get used to wrapping it how long it takes to wrap a row and you knit that off that one had two loops so it might have three i forget but either way it's out of the way now so i stick that there all right now the yarn is coming from this peg back to the beginning knit that off and then stick that one in there too see that went pretty fast um, one thing I did forget to mention every time you knit off a row and you push it down look on the inside and outside and double check just to make sure you didn't accidentally knit any of these off or that when you pushed it down it didn't pull that stitch back over now if you do end up finding any like when you're working through that have like two loops on it and they're not supposed to be very careful um, let me zoom this in just give you an idea what you would do what you'd want to do is you'd be very careful you would take this stitch right here off then you'd pull the bottom stitch there over top the top one but you have to make sure you're pulling that bottom stitch over the top and that they didn't get crisscrossed because if you get the wrong one you are dropping the stitch and it'll come undone all the way down however far you have worked unless you catch it 
Uh, I will do a separate video to show you how to pick those up in case that happens because I've had it happen to me multiple times because I like to binge watch. Uh, right now I'm binge watching Deep Space Nine while I am working on my projects. So what I just did, the stock net stitch, that is the entire body of this project. And I found for me, this seems to be the perfect length because I can fold it in half and it just cover my neck or I have enough to kind of cover my face and part of my head and part of the back of my neck. Altogether, it is about 10 and a half to 11 inches long. It's more, if I stretch it, it'll be, we'll say closer to 11 inches long. Now, this part of this right here will shrink down as you uh, do your cast off. But what I do, and I will show you again when I get more of this worked out. See, you've got like a four and a half inch space from here to here. This would be a lot easier if they, they need, I would really love it if they would make extensions for this loom to make it about double the length up and then you don't have to worry about folding and measuring and you can just work, work, work. Um, but what I do is I work it down and once it gets down here, it'll kind of start to pile and you got to kind of fold it up. I will work until it's folded up to where it's back up to this top. So it's going down and it's folded up and it's going back up and then I will do my cast off. Um, which of course I will show you that so it's hopefully I explained it good but I will show you that before we do the cast off. Just work on the body make it as long as you want. For me about 11 inches was perfect. If you want it shorter if you want it longer you work it however you want and I will show you the cast off. Alright We are at the cast off point for the hat. As you see, it's not quite as long as the cowl. The hat, you can make it as long as you would wish if you like more of the floppy style hat. That's just completely your own preference. But at this point, we're going to do the same we did with the cowl and take and move these stitches over. Kind of push one side up. Let me zoom in, show you what we're doing. Take the loop from this inside, put on the outside. Loop from inside, put on the outside. And you do this all the way around. All of the stitches are moved over so all these pegs on this outer loom will have two loops on each one. This inner loop, this inner loom is completely empty. Now you got to choose which color yarn you want to finish the hat up in. Since I started with the rainbow, I'm going to finish up with the rainbow as well. So I just cut the black yarn just a few inches so I can work it in. Now at this point you can continue to use this loom tool if you want or you can switch to a single needle tool. But what I'm going to do is both strands are now coming from the single peg and I am actually going to do just a flat stitch which is basically you take, we're going to run both these together until that strand runs out. We'll take these two loops on the bottom, take over the top. Two loops on the bottom, take over the top. And let me get a normal loom tool and show you with it as well. Oh, sorry. Okay. A normal loom tool. Working yarn held across the peg. Bottom loops taken over the top. And you do this. See the tail's getting shorter. That's good enough. As long as it's ran through at least like three pegs, that's enough. But go all the way around the loom. 
and you're actually going to do three rows of this flat stitch then we'll do the decreases so just what we're doing right here but this first round you will have two loops on the bottom that you're taking over the top um, your second one you'll have two loops for just the first few here just because of weaving that tail in and then it will just go to one so do three rows all together after your three rows now we will start a decrease and we're going to do two rows of decrease but what we're going to do sorry I have a cat that is determined to eat my yarn right now um, let me zoom this in okay here is my arrow count three one two three four peg number four we take the stitch off move to peg three you count four more move the one over so you'll have three width stitches one without three width one without and you're always moving it whichever direction you want to move it in is fine just do the same and I've got one more left so one two three four and then put that on there then you go around do one row of your flat stitch now some of these might be tight so if they are you just take one of the stitches off at a time and these ones right here you just go behind them and ignore them so go all the way around the loop and then I'll show you the next decrease okay so we got the row finished now for this next row of decreases you're doing the same thing that those three that were together you're taking that middle one moving it over one and move it the same direction you did with the previous row and what you will get is every other peg will have a stitch on it so you go ahead you knit off I said you might have to do both those by themselves and that's fine working yarn behind the empty peg knit off behind empty peg knit off do this all the way around one row is done every other peg on this outside loom has one stitch on it now we are going to wrap the working yarn at least two and a half to three times around the loom and cut it there we go oh that's so neat okay sorry guys zoom in and this is how we are going to do our cast off working yarn behind empty peg you will pull the working yarn up through or down through the stitch on the peg just be consistent working yarn behind skip the next one and pull the yarn up or down through kick that off there again we're going behind skipping one take it off behind skip one do this all the way around the loom went around once so this is kind of what it's looking like and ever you have three empty pegs one with the stitch three empty one with the stitch now you see this right here was the last one I took off so I can either pick up this one or skip and pick up that next one uh, since there's one in between I'll go ahead and pick up this one why not Pick that up pop it off now you're picking up all of the remaining stitches left on the loom and just popping them off Figaro my cat is pulling the yarn as I am doing this okay at this point you can just 
very easily just with the yarn pop them off and what you're doing right here is called a flat top cast off well flat top pull string cast off um, it just it takes that bulkiness into two rounds as you can see it creates a very nice uh, top to a hat I'm I'm definitely a fan of this cast off for a hat you can do just a couple simple decreases take out the bulk And then do your cast off. And that's the last one. Zoom this out and I will show you how to tighten this up. Okay, so this is what we got. And compare the size of this oops, to the size of our cow. See, the cow is significantly longer. But this cow is actually a little longer than... Um, most of the ones I made, um, I just wanted it a little bit longer for myself. But see, it still did the same striping as the other. But let's tighten this up. Now, what you'll see is you have two rounds. You have two rounds here tightening up. You have this top circle, and then you have your inner circle, which is your first ones that you um, took off. So what I do is I kind of hold it in place with my finger and just kind of pull and try to tighten everything up as much as I can then I put that working yarn down through the middle and I'm going to flip it inside out and I've got so much yarn here I don't need all that I'm going to cut some of this wow those scissors are dull okay flip it inside out and I'm doing the same thing again, just kind of holding it, trying to pull through the entire thing so that I just have one. There we go. Now let's see what the outside looks like. See? So that kind of puckers up, but it goes, see it puckers up a bit. Um... If you don't want it to pucker up that much, you can do more rows of your flat stitch before you go into the decreases. Um, but for me, this one will probably be a, a little floppy. And when you put it on your head tight, a lot of the bulk here kind of goes away. But now at this point, what you want to do is make sure that's tightened up as tight as you can get it. Uh, do be careful though because I have had cases where I've broken the string and that's very difficult to fix after that point. So now I'm just taking this string and kind of weaving it through a bit, locking it in so it don't go anywhere. I'm just picking up random stitches that aren't too far from each other. And pulling the yarn through. And do that for a bit. Just pull through a few. And one thing I like to do, which you don't have to do this, is I'll pull it through maybe one or two. And I'll make a loop. Pull the tail through. I tighten that up a bit and I'll make a little knot that keeps it from unraveling but if you just weave it through um, just down far enough then you won't have that knot you don't have to worry about doing a knot there we go I want to do a little bit more okay so we've got this string and if you look it's separating all these stitches here. So what we do is, this is the cast on string, this is what we're going to secure like the last stitch with. So we go to the next one, this one's kind of tied into it, so I'm going to go to this stitch. And we're only picking up the stitches above that beige uh, collar. So we pick up the first two, take the second one past, 
Then you pick up the next one, take that second one over, pick up the next one. You can see the stitches are kind of crossed. I just pick up the back one and then you'll have like a front one. And I do this all the way around. And see how it's giving you that crochet edge. This is what you do all the way around. Which I'm going to go ahead and work it to just the last couple stitches and I'll show you what to do. Okay, so I'm right here back at my beginning. So I can go ahead and cut that. What I've got left is there is like two stitches right here. It's that cast on in that next stitch. I'm just going to grab both of those at the same time. Now that's all the stitches. So now you can actually take and pull that string out and see. And now I got to kind of connect both of these, but you want to kind of run. Like if this is already locked in, you can weave it in. But here it is. So you got your hat and your neck warmer. All right, awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed this and the um, all of the direct links, PDF videos, everything for the cow. It's in the video description below as well for the hat, the PDF and everything. It's actually uh, one PDF because the only difference in both these projects is the cast off because you can make them as you can make either one as long or short as you would like. If you want this to be an ear warmer, just make it, you know, about that long cast off. You use an ear warmer. There's a lot of different options you have with this. Okay, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to watch. And hope you guys have a nice day and enjoy.